Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing an initial overview of this bad boy right here, the Beretta A300 Ultimo Patrol. Unfortunately, this is only an initial overview because I have not had a chance to actually go out there and shoot it yet, though there are already a few videos, at least on YouTube, with reviews um, where they have been able to shoot it and everything that is shown has been utterly reliable and a very pleasant shooter. So to quickly go over some stats of the shotgun, the Beretta A300 is a family of shotguns released by Beretta. Um, mostly they've been released as more like hunting and sporting shotguns. Um, they took, Beretta took the A300, uh, they took the, uh, the, the hit popularity of their 1301. Um, you know, it was released a few years ago and has quickly become very much adored uh, by shooters, law enforcement, and I think even some military um, people call it the uh, the Benelli M4 killer. So I don't know if it's quite that, but it is definitely a very, very uh, well well respected shotgun. So um, that said, the Beretta 1301 is is a bit more expensive, not quite as expensive as the M4, um, but it, it's about 1,500 bucks. So. Uh, this year at SHOT Show, they released the A300 Ultima Patrol, where they took the A300, uh, they added some features to it, along with uh, accessories to maybe really suit it more towards the tactical use, police use, um, guys and probably, you know, more so in the ARs and whatnot. Um, overall, the Beretta has a 19.1 inch barrel. It is a seven plus one capacity shotgun, semi-auto. Um, the gas system is not the same as the 1301. Uh, that shotgun uses what they call blink technology or the blink system, I can't remember exactly, um, but it is known to be super, super fast. Uh, Beretta themselves have said that while the A300 Ultimo Patrol does not have the blink system. Um, it is just slightly slower than the 1301. And really, people who accept the most expert shooters are really not going to notice um, the, the, the slower speed of the 300 compared to the 1301. As it comes from the factory, it does have your standard uh, stock on it. Uh, this does not share the same stock as the 1301, um, nor can you swap it due to the operating system. Almost like an AR, there is a rod that comes down here into the buttstock. Uh, it just is not compatible with the 1301, so you cannot swap it out. Um, it definitely does have a shorter length of pull. I don't know the exact measurement, um, but when it comes from the factory, it comes with just a rubber butt pad. Um, screwed down to the stock. It also comes with a slimmer shim and one that's about a third thicker than this one. Um, it allows you to adjust your length of pull. Having no shim made it just a little bit too short for me, so I added the, uh, the medium shim or the smaller shim uh, and it worked out great. Um, also, some of the features that they added to be a little more tactical minded, as you see here, is an oversized charging handle along with an oversized bolt release. Uh, one of the really cool features also about this is you see here uh, in, the, in the loading entry area, um, the loading port, it, it's scalloped. Uh, and it's made that way, so as you load shells into the shotgun, it just makes it really super smooth and easy. Um, the handguard, moving on, has a very, very aggressive texture on here. It's almost like um, skateboard tape. Uh, it's super, super grippy, but it's not too rough on the hand. Uh, and they also added some M-Lock slots. So as you see here, that has allowed me to mount a flashlight. Uh, you have that on both sides of the shotgun, along with a piece on the bottom. Um, and then it also from the factory, it comes with a mag extension, which like I mentioned, gives you that seven plus one capacity. Uh, and then there is also the barrel clamp. So the barrel clamp is made out of polymer. And what's kind of cool here is that um, you, it has QD swivels already built in both sides. So whether you're a left-handed or right-hand shooter, and, and there's another one that is on the bottom of the buttstock here comes from the factory with a uh, rubber plug that's in there you just pop that one out and allows you to mount qd swivels so on the forums and i think even on a couple of the youtube reviews i saw some people had some issues being able to use qd swivels they couldn't get it to go in all the way they couldn't get it to grab um you know people had said you know, sometimes they're screwed in a little bit too far you can back it out or maybe there's a burr around the plastic you can trim it out um as you can see here I'm using the Blue Force Gear Vicker Sling. Uh, I didn't have any problems with that. Um, I, I don't know if maybe even some of those people were using cheaper uh, QD swivels. And from my experience with cheap QD swivels in the past, uh, those are the only ones that I've ever had problems with. When you stick with quality branded ones, it's typically not an issue. That's not to say that maybe the QD cups in the Bread A300 don't have issues in some way or another. Um, another feature for the sighting system, uh, this does have a ghost ring sight system. Uh, they are made of polymer. I'm not sure what the 1301s are made out of, but they're definitely, you know, even though they're polymer, they're very sturdy. You get the ghost ring sight in the back, along with a fiber optic front that has the protective ears. 
Now, typically when it comes from the factory, there is a small section of Picatinny rail here. Um, it allows you to mount any type of opt optic system you would like, or a red dot holographic weapon sight, uh, whatever it may be. And I'll get into what I chose to go with on my gun here uh, in just a minute. As far as the safety goes, it does have a cross bolt safety. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that it is in front of the trigger guard versus behind the trigger guard, like a, a lot of shotguns are. Um, that is a, a kind of a cool feature. It's a little bit more natural. One downside for me is being a left-handed shooter, um, pushing it with my left finger in puts it on safe, whereas pushing it with my thumb puts it on safety. So typically when I've shot more standard shotguns with the safety um, button behind the trigger guard, it's a bit easier for me because when I go to click it off safe, I can, I can reach over with my thumb very naturally and put a shot on fire. Not quite so easy to do uh, with the uh, safety button being in front of the trigger guard. Uh, I, I want to say, I think I, I read somewhere that the, uh, the safety is reversible. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to take a look at the manual on that one. Um, lastly, as far as the factory features go, um, what's really kind of cool is, you know, these, these type of shotgun carts have become very popular over the years. Um, definitely some pros over going with the ones that the hard ones that get bolted through the receiver, uh, from Beretta, they give you a piece of Velcro to stick onto the receiver for using these shotgun carts. And as you can see, it is cut out perfectly for the shape of the receiver, along with spaces left for you to be able to push the pins out without having to remove the Velcro or pop holes in the Velcro or be it what it may. Um, does not come installed easy enough once you get the gun, uh, wipe it down with a little bit of alcohol, let it dry and stick it on. And so far as I put this thing on and ripped it off, push it on, ripped it off, have not had any issues with the edges of the, um, of the hook or the loop Velcro patch coming on unstuck from the receiver. Uh, when it comes to the trigger, you know, I know when most people, when it comes to a shotgun, uh, with the exception of maybe some um, professional shooters or hunters, you, you really don't really associate a good trigger with a shotgun too much. You don't, you, nobody really worries about it. I don't even think there's aftermarket triggers available for the, a lot of guns outside of maybe the Benelli, maybe the 1301. But the trigger on this gun is very crisp. Feels very good. I have not put my trigger gauge on it, but it is nice and light, but not too light. Reset. Very tactile. So very, very nice trigger for a shotgun. Probably the best one that I felt from a factory uh, in comparison to a, a bunch of other shotguns that I've had over my life. Another thing that I want to note about the Beretta A300 Ultimate Patrol is the weight. Uh, it feel, it is a very, feels very light, very handy. Um, it is a very well-balanced shotgun. I think Beretta uh, advertises it as 7.1 pounds. I know that I weighed mine and it was about 6.9, so let's just say 7 pounds. Um, I know that doesn't sound super light, but when you feel it in hand, especially in comparison to my Mossberg 590, um, which definitely also feels a bit more nose heavy, it, it, it feels super light. And again, super light, super handy. Uh, definitely like that feature a lot about it. Uh, moving on to some of the, the, the upgrades or features that I've done to the gun. Um, I like, you know, the way that it comes from the factory, it is very well set up along with the options uh, between the M-lock rail, between having the pick rail, um, that gives you uh, the ability to add optics, add weapon lights. So um, I knew when I chose this shotgun, I was deciding what type of arm, um, red dot I wanted to go with. I toyed with maybe putting something on there, like a full-size red dot, like a T2, or I guess you could call that a micro. A T2, I'd even thought about an EOTech. Uh, ultimately, I wanted something that was going to end up co-witnessing uh, with the iron sights. Um, and then when it came down to it, um, you know, it was going to be open emitter or closed emitter. Uh, ended up going with this Aimpoint Acro P1. Um, I do have a couple of P2s on other guns. Um, I was able to pick this one up secondhand on AR15.com's equipment exchange, pretty much like new with the box with the papers, uh, everything for like $400 ship. So we jumped all over that one. Uh, and then as far as getting it mounted onto the shotgun itself, uh, this mount here is made by Ferrotech. Um, super super great mount uh, not super expensive it's about $65 uh, all you need to do is remove the factory pick rail with the three screws that come on it um, take the ferrotech mount and, and screws down with two um, put it on with a little bit of loctite and you're good to go and once you do and i will put a picture in here of the co-witness of what the sight picture looks like um, co-witnessing with the irons uh, this is a lower third 
Um, I think it's Aridis or maybe it's Nordic Components. I'm not 100% sure. They make a mount that's very uh, sturdy also, but it's Absolute Coat Witness. And I'm not really a big fan of Absolute Coat Witness mounts. Um, very happy with this. They do also make mounts for, uh, I, I pick one up for my 2245 to allow me to mount my Leupold uh, Delta Point Pro. Um, so very happy with that. Um, getting into the weapon light, um, I took, ended up taking this off my 18 inch build that I did. I, I, I picked up a cloud defensive rain 3.0 for it. Um, and I just, I, I, I wanted to move this Arasaka 18650 body, um, with the Malkoff E2 XTL head over to the shotgun. Uh, initially I went through a, uh, went with a straight M lock mount, uh, and I mounted it on the left hand side and, and put on this, on the, on this side, the right hand side, a low pro, low profile Arasaka uh, Picatinny, Picatinny section um, allowed me to mount my mod button light. Did not it was really low profile. Uh, the one bad thing about that, or the downside, is I had to run my cable underneath here. Wasn't really super happy with how that looked. Um, and then ultimately, I, I just felt it look, looked a little bit too cluttered. So ultimately, I ended up choosing to put it on the right hand side with an Arisaka offset mount, uh, which for me it, it made it more ergonomic. So where the pressure pad before. I had to kind of you know move my thumb down here when in compared to my natural grip having the push button right here it definitely feels a lot more natural and intuitive um, it did and one downside of that is it forced me to where it's mounted and where the mounting lugs are on the weapon light it does sit back from the barrel a bit does it give you a little bit of a shadow but you know a muzzle shadow it, i think it's something that's made a bigger deal on the internet than what it really needs what it really is um, but the good thing about that also is not, it no longer interferes with my sling. When I had the inline mount on there before, the weapon light was pushed out to about this far here, um, which as you can see, where, as the sling moves around, uh, it can cause some problems. <clears throat> a couple things that I would like to see different, or, or upgrades that I'd like to eventually see to it. Uh, I know a lot of people, where they, they talk about where the QD mount is on the bottom. It would be better if Beretta maybe would have put some here on each side of them. I do agree with that. I know some people have also talked about some options. There is aftermarket QD cups that you can put in. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on the forum to see the outcomes of that or how well they turn out. Uh, <clears throat> good thing about it being here, while it does feel a little bit awkward, the gun wants to turn upside down. Well, if you drop your gun to go pick up your sidearm, it does drop very naturally and out of the way. I guess you can, you know, the, the justification of living with the QD location back here. Um, even though the charging handle is oversized, um, if, if somebody offers an aftermarket one that's a little larger and knurled, I'll probably change that out. And I know the Aerodisc for the 1301, they do make a protective gate along with a different uh, bolt release. Um, this one does get the job done, but if somebody ends up coming out with one, I'll probably pick one up of those also. And then lastly, the barrel clamp. You know, the barrel clamp is made of polymer. Um, it's, it's, it, it does the job. Uh, I don't need the M-Lock slot that's in there. Um, but if somebody ends up making a aftermarket barrel clamp, maybe Nordic components or something like that, I will probably definitely pick one of those up also. But uh, that about wraps this video up. I am super excited to get out there and shoot it. I'm not really a big shotgun guy. I've had probably nine or ten over the years, and I've gotten rid of every single one of them. Um, but this one here, I, I have a good feeling that I'm going to end up sticking with. Um, super great offer, uh, offering from Beretta. Um, again, you can find them pretty easily for about $999. Um, they offer them in black like I have here. They also offer a gray one and a tiger stripe one. Uh, I really would have really liked to get my hands on the gray one, but I couldn't get, I couldn't find one in stock. So I went ahead and got the black one and then sure you would, you know, as ironic as it is, the night that I got shipping notification for this one, I got a couple back in stock alerts for at other places for the gray one. So, hey, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, um, there's my initial overview of the new Beretta A300 Ultimate Patrol. If you liked it, please like, please subscribe, share the video. Um, thank you very much for watching.